In the media industry, especially with video games, remakes and remasters are a very dominant product. They're not going anywhere anytime soon given how successful they are. In a business sense, it's a very safe bet to take an existing game that you know will sell well and just release it again. Whenever a new one is announced, especially with dormant franchises like the Dead Space remake, it's always a bittersweet feeling because while I'll always prefer a new entry in the series, it's hard not to get excited to see a revamp of an old favorite. There's an important distinction to be made between the remaster and the remake. The ideal remaster, touching up and polishing the existing game, should, if done right, invalidate the original. A good recent example of this is Skyward Sword HD, which, despite a lack of perceived effort, due to quality of life changes, higher frame rate, and improved controls, make you never want to pick up that Wiimote and Nunchuck ever again. Even remasters that miss the mark can do this, like Dark Souls Remastered. Not only did that game look worse than the original in a lot of areas, but it fixed almost none of the biggest bugs and glitches, and in fact introduced a lot of new ones. Despite all of that, it still ends up being the best way to play the game just due to having a functional higher frame rate of 60 FPS. That and them removing the original game from the store, but that's a subject for another video. The term remake is generally reserved for something like Final Fantasy VII Remake or the newer Resident Evil games. These often end up being completely different games than the originals. With an all new engine, completely new controls, it's hardly even the same game. But sometimes this jump can be necessary if a game is particularly outdated. Bluepoint Games is a studio known for these sorts of efforts. They started out making some great remasters with the Uncharted Collection and the God of War Collection, but their two most recent efforts of Shadow the Colossus and most recently Demon's Souls Remake, they've transitioned to making something much more ambitious. And they're very interesting because they sit somewhere in the middle of these two definitions. While on the surface, the entirety of the game's presentation is redone from scratch with stunning visuals, what seems to be a new engine, but that's just on the surface. With both of these games, Bluepoint runs their all-new engine alongside the original game's engine. So despite looking like an all-new recreation, it's very faithful in that it's the exact same gameplay as the original. So you would think that given that it's the exact same game, no special liberties are being taken, it'd be a safe bet and adored by the Souls community far and wide, right? No. Surprisingly, in the Souls community, it's very divisive, even rivaling Dark Souls 2 levels of splitting the fanbase. And that's because while just a few changes were made to the core gameplay, Bluepoint really had a field day changing up the designs of many of the game's characters and enemies, and some other aspects of the art design. If you ask my thoughts on the remake as a whole, I'd say this should have been flipped. The biggest problem, in my opinion, of the Shadow of the Colossus remake is that they played it too safe. There was a severe lack of changes made to the gameplay. Despite looking like an incredible AAA game, it still had the same infuriating controls from the PS2 version. You get the feeling more could have been done, more should have been done, and that's the same way I feel about the Demon's Souls remake. I think Bluepoint was too adventurous in some areas and not enough in others. Now, when trying to understand this split in the community over this game, what you need to do is understand how each party sees each other. If you hate the new designs, then to someone that likes them, you kind of seem like a nitpicking brat. You see how good you have it with this remake? Most fan bases would kill for a revival like this, especially given just how niche this game is. It's one of the best looking games ever made and you're still gonna talk shit because the sky looks different? I don't think you'd be satisfied with all the riches in heaven. On the other hand, if you like the visuals or even don't mind the redesigns, then you obviously aren't a real fan of Demon's Souls. I mean, seriously, how can you settle with these designs that so blatantly miss the point? Everything is just so needlessly gross now. Look at the Vanguard, look at the Maneater, look at these things. The devs were just going for shock value and don't care about being faithful. Look at the sky in Boletaria. Am I going for a morning stroll through the flowers? Or am I fighting for my life in a war-torn kingdom? Now, you wanna ask me what I think? I think, I think both sides are right. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the Vanguard doesn't look amazing, but it's a fact that it is much different than the original design. And dedicated fans have a right to be disappointed with that. Now don't get me wrong, Demon's Souls, no matter which way you play it, is an incredible game. While I can empathize with people's complaints, they're mostly gross exaggerations. The game isn't ruined because they removed a filter from a level, or changed the way the fat official looks. Now I'll tell you what ruins this game, do you see what they did to the Moonlight Sword? It's so loud and unnecessary, and the little magic trail it leaves whenever you swing it is delayed. It doesn't match the sword. How was this game worked on for three years and no one was bothered to actually time this effect? Look how good it looks in the pause menu. Why can't it look like this in game? Now this changed. I don't like how it looks. It might affect me more than the others, but am I condemning the PS5 version because of changes like this? Of course not. 
It's a much different interpretation of the art, but you would be a fool to say there was no appreciation for the original game in the remake. There is so much love and care put into this. For every monster design that's different, there's an incredible environment or jaw-dropping set piece. To try to undersell this game's presentation is a sin. This game glistens in ways that no other Souls game does, which is admittedly purely a result of Sony's money being dumped into this game. Graphics definitely aren't the most important part of the game, but examining Demon Souls remake next to other Souls games, it's a case study in what a good presentation can do for a game. And the point I want to try to make with this video is that sometimes it takes that outside influence to push a project forward. Like Dark Souls 2, this game pushes the Souls series forward. What? What? I know. I know. Alright? Dark Souls 2 had a lot of issues, and most of those come down to the lack of involvement from Miyazaki. Boss designs weren't as interesting, the world's layout didn't make sense, you've heard it all before. But take this from me, an avid Dark Souls 2 hater. As time goes on, for all of the game's problems, I can appreciate Dark Souls 2 for introducing a lot of great ideas for the series. And you can tell that these ideas were a result from not being part of Miyazaki's team because they were all absent in Bloodborne. Some of these changes would be brought to Dark Souls 3, and hopefully stay for future installments like being able to respec your character, jumping with L3 instead of Circle, not being directly booted into New Game Plus after beating the game, and some of which that sadly did not persist with the series, like New Game Plus featuring new enemies, or power stancing which was so badass and made everyone's bootleg dual wield build from Dark Souls 1 a reality. But similar to how these features were left behind in Dark Souls 2, when it comes to Demon's Souls Remake, this level of polish we're seeing will live and die with this game. Or at least it'll probably take 10 years for From Software's in-house projects to reach this level of fidelity. I remember the first time I saw Demon's Souls Remake gameplay and thought, damn, this is going to be really awkward when Elden Ring comes out two years later and looks far worse. Again, graphics aren't the most important thing, but it's not just the graphical quality that makes a presentation. Listen to me, when you talk to NPCs in Demon's Souls Remake, their mouths are fully animated. It might not sound like a big deal, but it's a first for the series, and it works magic for the characters of this game. Look at Patches, dude. This guy is 100 times more slimy. It just hits so much harder when you go through his questline. This isn't something that you can write off due to technical limitations at the time, because even Sekiro and Dark Souls 3 don't have this. And don't tell me it's a stylistic choice of the artistic vision of the Souls games. Look at Andre's dumb little mouth flapping like an anime character. Could you imagine if he had blue point quality animation for all of his dialogue? It would be incredible. I am fully expecting Elden Ring to have static mouths when talking to NPCs, because that's just not a high priority for From Software. It's something that could only exist because Bluepoint made it. Their sole objective with this remake is to make it look nicer, and in that regard, they killed it. It's that extra layer of polish that, while not affecting the game itself, really puts the experience of this game to another level. Another fantastic thing Bluepoint has done, something that I've been dying to see, is the music in boss fights. Now, I'm not talking about the music itself, I know that's another very divisive topic. But I more so mean the way the music is handled. Listen to the Vanguard's music as it dies in both games, and tell me if you hear the difference. If there's one thing that a game like Nier taught me, it's that there's so much more to music in a game than just playing and stopping it. In Nier Automata, for example, there are three different versions of every song in the game, and they dynamically change depending on what you're doing, whether you're just walking around, or you're in a menu, or you're in the middle of combat. When it comes to Souls games, we all know that fabled feeling of beating a boss after you've struggled over and over, you get that rush of adrenaline, and to have that thunderous soundtrack let you down easy, it reinforces that you just accomplished something great. It's one of those things that was never a complaint in other Souls games, but boy is it hard to go back to once it's gone. Listen to some Bloodborne music real quick and tell me that it wouldn't be so cool if it played out the same way as it does in Demon's Souls Remake.
Earlier, I mentioned that the Shadow of the Colossus remake's biggest problem is that it did not fix enough of the game, and that's the same case for Demon's Souls Remake. It's not unfair to say that it's faithful to a fault. I remember before this game came out, the developers were saying that the AI is completely untouched. Like, it's the untouched majesty of the original, like that's something to be proud of. Are we gonna pretend the man-eaters don't fly around for 20 minutes with bugged AI, or the Vanguard can butt-stomp eight times in a row? I could go on with examples, but what I'm trying to say is that with a remake as in-depth as this, you have such a great opportunity to not only fix glaring issues, but add in all new ideas. Now I've got to hand it to them for the issues they did fix. Being able to send items back to storage at any time is amazing. It solves the inventory problem without invalidating Stockpile Thomas. But there are some features seen in modern Souls games I would have loved to have seen here. You can't respec your character, beating the final boss sends you right into New Game Plus. I think if a PvP arena was added to the Pantheon, it would have done wonders for the game's replayability. I also really don't think a plunging attack would have been too much of an issue to add. I've played through the remake about three times now, and it's a pretty glaring omission compared to the newer Souls games. It's not the end of the world, but I just don't see a problem with including it. However, like the arena, additions this big weren't made in the name of being faithful, which I can agree with. On the subject of PvP, I think that PvP in Demon's Souls Remake can be best described as a delightful f**k fest. Everything in this game can be a stunlock if you believe enough. For every great weapon or spell, there are hundreds of worthless mechanics like plague or bleeding. I want to stress that the PvP itself is unchanged from the original, but due to it coming out in 2020, it's, for the first time, functional. You get to see all of its wild, broken glory in a new perspective and not getting chained lag stabbed to death. Phantom Range does still exist, but in terms of how it feels to play, it feels a lot like Dark Souls 3, and you can really appreciate how balanced Dark Souls 3 is, and, you know, I say balanced with massive air quotes. In that game, you can always roll out of a certain number of attacks. Damage, for the most part, is scaled accordingly. For a while, I wondered if I might have liked maybe a readjustment to frame data for the remake's PvP to kind of account for how broken it is, but that would have been an impossible task, as well as had massive detriments to other PvE encounters. So I don't have a problem with that. Let's leave it how it is, but let's examine that pile of dog shit with a beautiful 4K camera. If there's something I can appreciate the most of Demon's Souls, it's the openness. It didn't dawn on me until recently that the structure of this game really is Super Mario 64. For the most part, you can beat these levels in any order you want, and while that freedom is appreciated, it means that the game needs to be balanced for any order that you play the levels. Most people end up finishing Valley of Defilement last, and because of that, the Dirty Colossus gets absolutely rocked by anyone that fights it. This is kind of abstract, but I think what have really helped is for every world that you fully completed, the other worlds kind of scaled up a little bit in difficulty. That way you get the satisfaction of beating the world in any order you want to, but the difficulty scales with you until the end of the game. There are a few more things in this game that I would have liked changed, but I just can't fault the devs at all for not touching them, and that's soul form and world tendency. The concept of soul form and being human or not human in the soul series I think was perfected with Dark Souls 3. You can spend the item to increase your health bar, but you run that risk of being invaded. But in Demon's Souls, there is the added risk of dying in human form, making the game harder. Because of that risk, I almost never played through levels in human form. Like a lot of other people, I just suicide in the Nexus whenever I beat a boss. I like that ephemeral eye stones are more plentiful, but that doesn't change how we handle soul form and world tendency. The only thing they did to world tendency is make it slightly more easy to understand, but it's still, in my opinion, a flawed system. Don't get me wrong, I love the concept of World Tendency, but I wish that there were more options in how to change it. Because just like the original, the only reliable way to change it is to play multiplayer. If you don't have any more bosses to kill, you just need to hope someone's out there to summon you. And if you can't turn human anymore, then you need to pray somewhere out there, little Timmy just got this game for Christmas and you can go rock their shit. Using eye stones to turn yourself human just to kill yourself in the level to get darker tendency? I refuse to believe that was the intended way to play the game. What if you could just... I mean, I don't think anyone in the world would mind if after you fully complete a level, all three parts, you could just choose the world tendency. You've already finished the level, there's no need to worry about making it too easy. Wait, I know who gives a fuck. I just got done talking about how much Souls fans hate the color of the sky, of course they'd hate this idea. What about this? What about after you beat a level, you can access a super hard version of the world with a remixed layout, all black phantom enemies and a black phantom boss, and when you beat that, your reward is to just choose the tendency. And after you do that, like, your reward is just to choose any tendency. But you know, for every hypothetical change I think up, there's that little voice in the back of my head that thinks, no, 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 don't change it, leave it how it is. And I think that most people prefer that as well.
To reiterate, I think that while in many areas the remake is so faithful, Bluepoint was a little too adventurous in some other areas as far as design goes. I would have appreciated if the monster designs were more close to the original, but all things considered, Demon's Souls remake is the best way to play the game. Does it invalidate the original? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. For me, I mean, if I'm sitting down to play Demon's Souls, I'm always going to load up the PS5 version. But given especially how well it runs on an emulator, if someone tells me they'd rather just boot that up instead, not to mention how hard it is to get a PS5 right now, how expensive it is to play this game, I can't blame someone for sticking with the original for the time being. But with all my videos, I like to encourage discussion, so I'd like to see some comments, even if you dislike the video. That is valuable to me. Just know you're a little bitch. <laughs>